Hey everybody, it is power session time. Welcome, super excited to be with you today. Um, kind of changing up the environment today. I'm actually in our conference room here. Give you a quick little look-see in terms of, uh, we've got a scroll on every wall. See if I can pay attention as I'm doing this. Little zoomed in, a scroll on every wall, vaulted ceilings, a super awesome spot here. And I've just got our, our whiteboard open here. Just wanted to change things up. Uh, my dad and business partner is on a cruise right now, which is super awesome. And his office is right next to the conference room. So I don't get the opportunity to be in here all that often. Let me see if I can get this lined up again for us. There we go. So um, super excited to be with you guys today. As you'll notice the theme on the back here is a classic Nintendo game over um, uh, drawing, but today we're going to be talking about game on. We're gonna, I, I talk about personal development all the time as being, um, being a game that we play. Personal development is a game that your habits of thinking are gaming you all the time, so you might as well figure out how to game them back, and that's a big part of what we do. And what's great about games is we can be curious, we can have fun, we can, we can have purpose and drive and emotion, and everything that comes with playing games. Sometimes we can go overboard, sometimes we can be apathetic, sometimes we just don't feel like playing, but the game is always going on. And so today we're gonna to be talking about how to design the game that is your life. And I'm so pumped about this. I can't wait to share with you what I got and what I'm gonna review with you guys because I stumbled on it by accident, just from a total random Google search, thinking about um, the theme today of talking about the game of your life and the game of what you're doing, okay? Now, I am going to be leaning over here a couple of times. I've got my microphone right in front of me still, though, um, just to uh, be able to see you guys. Let me maximize this screen and check chat and stuff. So I'll do my best to not spend too much time down here, but I want to make sure I don't uh, miss you guys while we're going through. Are we eating ghosts? Yes, totally. Awesome. Love it. So many parallels to games and everything else. So do me a favor. It's a little echoey for me in here, but if you could put in the chat, let me know if the sound's coming through okay. I hope the echo isn't irritating. Um, that's why I've got my microphone down here, so hopefully it's okay. Uh, still sounds good, but super excited to dive into this stuff with you. Can't wait to share with you in just a second um, what I stumbled upon and how awesome and powerful I think it's gonna be for our session today. So let me just check to see if anyone shared through. Okay. <laughs> to examine my full head of hair. Yeah. My, my full head of brown hair, by the way. Okay, sounds awesome. Okay, good, awesome, thanks Becky, cool. Okay, let's jump into this. I get the opportunity to talk to my clients all the time about the game of life, the game of business, the game of money. These are all games that we play. Whether you want to play them or not, they're part of your everyday life. And again, as I was sharing for those of you who are jumping on right at first, my favorite reason for talking about this stuff being a game is because games can be fun. Games are curious. If we lose a game, we realize that our life isn't over. We just lost the game. Now we might have some emotional investment involved that makes it difficult to detach from that occasionally. I certainly have been accused of getting a little too into games, and by a little, I mean a lot into games. I can get really caught up in the game, but that's because I love to play, and I love to win. Now, there are things that I learn about how I approach that and stuff that are so cool to talk about life and talk about in everything else that we do, and I'm pumped to give you 10 keys today. And I didn't even have to come up with these, but they're so in alignment with what we teach and what I work with my clients on in terms of creating and designing the game of your life, what you wanna be aware of, what you wanna do and not do, the mindset required to play this game. When, when it's time to back off from the game and, and intentionally check out and give yourself some quiet time and reset, all this stuff. I didn't have to do any of this because the RPG fanatic, that's his user handle, on giantbomb.com shared this as a blog post in September 2010. So as I was thinking about, I, I love analogies. If you cracked open my brain, you'd see half of it was wired with analogies. The other half was wired with movie quotes. That's just how I operate. Um, and so as I consider the analogy of gaming, and I think about the fact that life is a game, that our business is a game, people 
we get the opportunity to play games with, um, that we want to have a really positive, curious, open, fun, lighthearted discussion around this, but also give an opportunity to take it deeper. And this came from an actual professional game designer. So I just Googled what are the what are the the best practices for game designers, something to that effect. And this blog article came up of the 10 keys to designing a great game. Um, this was by the RPG fanatic on giantbomb.com back in September 2010. He certainly wasn't intending it for this kind of audience. But as I read it, I like got the chills with what he was talking about and how it applies to our lives. And, and it just sums up beautifully what I try to talk to my clients about one-on-one -on -one in terms of their games and their lives and what they're trying to accomplish, okay? So, and the goal is obviously to make sure that it's never a game over. So we talk about the difference between failing and being a failure. I think of Ogmandino's, one of Ogmandino's quotes that I love, which is, there is an immeasurable distance between late and too late. Um, there is a, a huge difference between failing and being a failure. Um, in fact, it's one of the reasons why I don't like to call them fails. I like to call them falls. Because more times than not, especially when we consider the mindset of playing a game, we just fell down. We didn't fail. End of story. Wah, 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 wah. You know, we didn't game over ourselves. We just fell. So before we dive into this top 10 list that uh, the RPG fanatic created for us as an incredible parallel to, get, to designing the game of your life, I want to make sure you've got a mindset in place that is really important for playing the game of life, okay? And it comes from the, the game Shoots and Ladders, okay? Now, those of you who played Shoots and Ladders, you've got this path you're trying to get through, okay? And this is a really generalized version of it, okay? And each one of these are squares, okay? I'm obviously in a hurry here. But here's the general premise. You start here. And you want to end here and get there and you win. The challenge is you've got these shoots that are like slides in different places. And some of them are pretty nasty. You can be getting really close and then have to end up way back down here. But there's also a balance of ladders that can help you get shortcuts and take you over short distances where every once in a while there's a huge one that can take you all the way there. Now this is a game. And it's really important to understand that if you're going to play the game of life, that there are amazing parallels, but then there are some things that we want to understand the difference between. And first of all, we want to understand that there are no shortcuts. No matter how many technical advances there are, no matter how many amazing deep thoughts you've got, there are no shortcuts. There are shortening learning curves. There are working smarter and harder. Somewhere along the way, that got crosswired to a false dichotomy that I can either work smarter or I can work harder, okay? You've got a generation of people who grew up being taught to work hard, and now you've got a generation of people who are being taught to work smart, and now they're battling each other. It's, you see it happening with millennials and older generations because they can see what just working harder didn't do for them in terms of fulfillment and getting where they wanted to be in life, okay? And then so they totally focus on working smarter, but just like the Industrial Revolution and just like generations that just put their head down and work hard and never really created anything in life in terms of fulfillment and reaching outside themselves and, and the people that experience disappointment and that lack of, now look at the people who are just trying to work smarter and, and envy them and the people who are working smarter feel superior to them and, and we miss the opportunity to create a balance, to create a beautiful relationship between working smarter and working harder. So remember, there are no shortcuts. No one gets to skip the work. It's one of the great challenges we have right now because we're creating things in our mind and assuming that the more vividly we create them in our mind, the more likely we are to create them in tangible reality when the opposite is usually true. The more vividly we create them in our mind, the less likely we are to engage because of specific all or nothing outcomes and perfection and, uh, and fantasy and escape and all these different things we talk about here in the power sessions and that we surgically dive into with our clients and our group coaching and individual coaching. But you want to understand there are no, short, no shortcuts. That's why the first decision you've got to make in life 
is the decision to engage in life. Now, does that mean you can speed things up? Certainly. But if you're trying to speed things up from a mentality, a game of escape, oh, if I could just hit that ladder so I can get there, you're going to spend all day missing this square while people are methodically moving forward and doing the work you are unwilling to do because you're trying to work smarter. So let's remember this, okay? No shortcuts. The next piece, no failures. I love when Og talks about that you are not created for failure. It is foreign to your body, foreign to your soul and your mind. And if you can accept that there are no shortcuts, you can also accept that there are no failures. There are no wah, wah, wah game overs, which are these shoots, okay, that seem to set us back to the infamous square one, right? How many of us have ever said, I feel like I'm right back at square one, or here we go again, or I guess I'm never going to get there, or maybe this is as good as it gets for me. Whatever the case may be, we want to understand that there are no failures. Just like there's no real ladders in life, you can hone your habits and get through these squares faster than you could before, and that comes from having the right mindset, the right construction of those habits to support that, the right clarity emotionally, physically, neurologically, to be able to find speed from the right reason, not because it's a shortcut, but because it's built on a solid foundation of good habits. You can go through these squares faster than you may realize that you can, but there are no shortcuts and there are no failures. Meaning, if I'm progressing through here, bum, 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 and I'm building habits and building habits, the human tendency is to hit a mistake. I offended someone, or I overstepped, or I did something wrong, and I, I lost a bunch of money, or I, I got kicked out of a job, or whatever. All sorts of things happen, emotionally, physically, professionally. And when that happens, <sighs> It's the natural tendency of the mind, which again is, can be very systemic, all or nothing, to go psychologically. The shoot, the slide, happens psychologically. But in reality, remember, this is your game that you're playing in life. It felt like this, okay? But remember, felt like is one of the worst guides for playing the game of life. What you feel as your compass is dangerous. What you feel as a result of following a compass of good habits is awesome. So again, we're not playing this game being led by our feelings. Now, intuition, empathy, how we feel towards other people, those are important to understand, observe, and to build healthy habits around. But if we're just doing things we feel like, then we're going to run into an obstacle at some point, okay? What most of the world would call a failure at some point, a mistake, okay? And we're gonna feel like there's this arbitrary slide that we have to slide down emotionally. This happens especially in relationships. We're even working on your relationship, especially with your spouse. It's feeling like it's going awesome, this is so good, and then you hit a, a, a trouble point, and the assumption psychologically, is we've been making progress, we've been making progress, and bam, it happened. We had a big blow up, we had a fight, and we are all the way back here. And then we start thinking about all the progress we lost, which is an illusion. Remember, the game of life doesn't have ladders or slides. It has habits, good habits and bad habits that will speed up or slow you down. And if you think you're here, even though you actually just did this, you went whoop, whoop, maybe you went back two spaces. So you really ended up here. But if you think you're here, you will unconsciously sabotage your life to prove that you're back here. You won't talk to your spouse for three days until it all settles down. Or you won't reach out and have that risky conversation with someone about your business because the last person you did that with said you were salesy. And so you felt like, when all you did was go back a space. All this progress is still relevant if you will allow it to be. So as you consider playing your game of life, and we'll go through the keys to designing that game of life here in just a second, make sure you understand there are no shortcuts, there are no failures, there are no shoots, there are no ladders. There is a game of progression that cares more about the direction you're headed, meaning you are progressing rather than going backwards, cares more about the direction you are headed than the distance that you've covered. Okay?
I hope that makes sense. Hope that gives you the right kind of framework and mindset for what we're going to talk about today in terms of designing your game. Any questions about that before we before we jump in? I'm going to huddle down here really quick to uh, check the chat. Candyland traps, yeah, totally. Love Candyland. Okay, great analogy, good, awesome, cool. All right, let's talk about the 10 keys to designing your game. Now that we know the mindset for playing it, those aren't the rules, that's the mindset for playing the game of life, playing the game of your business. There are no shortcuts, there are no failures, there are no shoots, there are no ladders. And the game cares more about the direction you're headed than how far you've traveled. So allow your brain to be convinced otherwise. And the more you want to feel like there are shortcuts, the more you want to feel like there are, uh, the more you think there's shortcuts, the more likely your brain will play into to shoots as well. The more ladders your brain believes that there are, the more likely you are to run into shoots that don't exist either. But again, don't exist, but play into your reality. Because your reality, okay, let's make sure we got this equation down. This is the last piece and then we'll get into the 10. Your reality, Okay, let's be really clear. Your reality. Big difference between reality and your reality. So surrendering to that thought alone is really important. But your reality equals your thinking habits, your thinking patterns, the things that we measure in the habit finder. That's what's determining your reality. And the more you try and get other people's realities to match yours, the more frustrating it becomes. But the more you start to become aware of your reality, the stronger position you are in to become aware of theirs. And if I can be aware of your reality and aware of my reality, I can play the game. But if I keep being convinced that my reality is your reality, or I let you determine your reality is my reality, then I can't play the game. I'm being played. I'm not playing the game. Important point I wanna make sure is really clear. If I can't tell the difference between your reality and my reality and honor both, I can't play the game. But more than likely, if I'm trying to force my reality onto someone else's reality, or more common is allowing their reality to be forced on mine, you know, I don't, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be salesy. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. And so we start looking for things in their reality to confirm those fears, those concerns, that selfishness. Then that becomes our new reality. Oh, yeah, people are totally bugged by what I'm putting on Facebook. Well, because one person said, would you really please stop posting this stuff all the time? It's annoying. And so we allow their reality to become our reality. And suddenly we feel like everybody feels that way. So again, the last piece of this mindset to play in this game is there's your reality, their reality. Those are two different things because there is no set of thinking patterns that are the same. There are over six quadrillion variables in the habit finder. There are no assessments, no habit finders that are the same when you go this deep. You can have a room full of people that are a high D and a mid I or a, this on the color scale or this on the animal quadrant or this in the MMPI or whatever. You could have a room full of people that have the same measurements in personality and even the same measurements in behavior and tendency. But when you go all the way to the top of the stream, to the source, the spring of your reality, which is your thinking, then we've got to realize that our reality is unique and so is theirs. And being able to observe and honor both is critical. Huge, huge point to consider before we even get into designing your reality. Okay. All right. Let's jump in. This is going to be fun. I'm literally going to read these off to you as he wrote them, and then we'll work through them together. Because as I read this, it was just, it was awesome, okay? And we're thinking about this in terms of designing our life, designing our business, designing our mindset, designing our relationships, because they're all games. Not because they're cheap, not because they don't matter, but because they require purpose and, and, and uh, passion and fun, and challenges, and competition, and everything in its valued order and its proper alignment makes for a wonderful game to play. 
So again, those of you just joining us, this is about designing the game of life as, as it pertains to uh, the RPG Fanatic, is his user handle, on giantbomb.com, where I was just looking up the rules and the, and the best practices for designing games to see if I could find some, some uh, kind of connect the dots to living life and designing uh, the game of personal development, because it is a game. And it's a game that you can win if you understand the mindset and the rules, and this is how you design it. Again, I'm gonna read these straight up from, uh, from how this person wrote these, which is just, you'll, you'll see why I'm so excited about this, okay? Number one, all games should have a premise, theme, or focus determined from the start. All games should have a target audience. Don't just design a game system without any central concept and then plug in some flavor text because you will just end up with a system that is far removed from the story concept that will break the suspension of disbelief in the player. I want to read that again because it's super cool. Because you will just end up with a system that is far removed from the story concept and that will break the suspension of disbelief in the player. The suspension of disbelief in the player. Then we'll try to understand why they have to, for example, fly through hoops in a Superman game come up with the concept of the game first, and then design the rules around that concept. What is this? This is your mission. Also referred to as your why. Number one rule to designing your game is figuring out what your mission and your why is. Now, as it's being shared here, you wanna start simple so that it can be clear you want to understand a target audience. Now, that doesn't have to mean a demographic segment of the population as much as just understanding who you could be talking to. What are the problems? What are the challenges that people are experiencing that you have been uniquely prepared to serve, that you have a solution for? To be able to understand that is essential so that you can make sure that the story concept, which is the narrative, of your life, the narrative of your business is not too far removed um, to, to prevent them from suspending their disbelief. The clearer your mission, the clearer your why, the, the more likely you are, as it says here beautifully, to suspend the disbelief, the skepticism, the, the, um, the questioning, the sabotaging dialogue, the lack of belief and confidence someone might have comes from your clarity around the premise, the theme, or focus, your mission or your why, of, of what you're doing. Now keep it simple. I see a lot of people get lost in their mission or their why needing to be way more elaborate to get them started. The mission or why can start really simple, just be open to it developing along the way. As you play a higher and higher level game, so you need to design the game at a higher and higher level, Allow your mission and your vision and your theme, your focus, your premise to develop. For example, some of you may have made a decision about your health. Let your mission and your why start really simple. Your mission and your why could be to fit in those jeans or that dress for that wedding or whatever. could be super simple. Not to transform your entire life. That can be developed over time. But we want to be really clear about that. So, for example, comparison can make this really hard because we're comparing our mission to someone else's mission, then it's gonna get beat down, it's gonna get convoluted, and we're going to, we're gonna take the story concept and it's gonna break too far away, and it's gonna break the suspension of disbelief. We're gonna get asked, well, what does this cost? And I can't afford it, and all kinds of objections that we get driven crazy having to deal with because we didn't suspend disbelief because we weren't really clear and confident about our mission and why. It's not about how big it is, it's about how clear it is to you. So start simple and then just be open to a building upon that. For example, I've, just, I've lost 30 pounds in the last 30 days. That feels awesome. That was my mission, okay, was, was to get down below a certain weight in the next 30 days, but now I can create a bigger mission because of that. Now I can go to the next goal and, and get clearer and, and more focused on the premise and the theme of my why for the next stage of the game, okay? All right, so that's number one, is establish a mission or why, keep it simple, keep it clear. 
Number two, verify and validate. That's awesome. Just to know it's up, that's literally what it says. Verify and validate at every step of the design. Verify and validate at every step of the design. Constantly ask yourself what the game is supposed to be about and if the current design is making that happen. Oh, this is so good in playing the game of your life. I mean, I, this is totally not what this guy wrote it for. You know, he's an RPG professional game designer, okay? But this is so perfect for how we want to live life. So I'm going to read that again. Constantly ask yourself what the game is supposed to be about and if the current design, design is making that happen. Ask yourself if the game is fun. And every time you add a new idea or mechanic, double check to make sure the game is still fun. If you're trying to have fun, double check and make sure what you're doing is still fun, not so that you can eliminate it, so that you can change your perspective. That is the key to number two, which is verify and validate. Verify your mission every step of the way. So number two is to verify number one every step of the way, and then to validate, to check in with yourself, to check in with others, to validate their reality, to validate your reality, to allow them to coexist so that you can teach them and help them and serve them. So number two, verify and validate. Remember that no matter what game you make, all games are entertainment. If a game fails to entertain its target audience, then the game is badly designed. Don't forget what you got into it for. Most of you are probably in a business because you wanted to make people feel better, improve the quality of their lives. Are you checking in with that every step of the way? And you're going to have two categories. You're going to have the things, actually three, I think. You're going to have the things you check in with that you just shouldn't be doing anymore because they're not moving the game forward. Okay? They're not accomplishing your mission. They're not verifying, and you're not verifying and validating why you're doing this. And it's just getting harder and harder to do. There's going to be some things that you should eliminate at that point. There's going to be some things that are totally on point, and you just need to do more of them consistently. But then there's going to be things that you don't want to do that you've got to shift your perspective on, which is why you want to be so clear here. Because if your mission and your why is verified and validated and connected to your actions, it will give you the perspective to shift that and see that that is an important part. And you're not just doing that because you have to and you should and you must. You're doing it because you want to. Why do you want to? Because it's a part of the mission, the why, the reason you originally set out to design the game. Okay? All right. Number three, do not design the rules of the game to simulate a virtual world. Ooh. Do not design the game, the rules of the game, to simulate a virtual world. Games are not virtual worlds. They are social activities. <laughs> Gosh, this is so good. Do not design the rules of the game to simulate a virtual world. Games are not virtual worlds. They are social activities. Even a single-player game requires the player to socialize with artificial intelligence. Games are fundamentally about learning new rules, and applying those rules to overcome challenges. Oh, it's like Ogmandino wrote, like was inspiring how to write design for games. Games are fundamentally about learning new rules and applying those rules to overcome challenges. Essentially, the rules of the game tell the players how to behave, the habits. Okay, let me replace this real quick. Games are fundamentally about learning new habits and applying those habits to overcome challenges. Essentially, the habits of the game tell the players how to behave. Do not design the game mechanics to promote behavior that detracts from the game being fun and enjoyable for the target audience of that game. Oh, so good. So good. So do not design the rules of the game to simulate a virtual world. Okay? Meaning... Dream, how do I want to put this? I had an idea for this before, but now it's... So do not design the rules of the game to simulate a virtual world. So 
So number three would be do not fantasize. Create. What that means is that 98% of us on this call, 96% uh, of us on this call have a vivid visualization overstimulated, meaning we can run off with our minds into this virtual world. We can create things in our mind in a nanosecond that require incremental methodical work here. And if we're trying to create from that fantasy world without using the millimeters, okay? In fact, I like that better. Number three is embrace millimeters. Not just any millimeters, but millimeters that are verified and validated to the mission and why and where you are in that progression of that mission and that why as we speak, as you go through this, okay? Number four, <laughs> kill your darlings. Kill your darlings. Do not fall in love with any game mechanic or idea. Any idea or mechanic that hurts the gameplay should be changed so that it has synergy with all the other game mechanics or ideas. If the idea cannot exist in harmony with the rest of the game design, it should be scrapped. Save it for a different game. Kill the darling, kill your darlings. Do not fall in love with any game mechanic or idea. Any idea or mechanic that hurts the gameplay should be changed so that it has synergy with all other game mechanics and ideas. If the idea cannot exist in the harmony with the rest of the game design, it should be scrapped. Save it for a different game. Okay, so number four is be in alignment. Be in alignment. Do your behaviors reflect your mission and what you're trying to accomplish for people? Do they? Do your behaviors, do your actions, do your goals support what you would like to create for other people? And do you have those things, you know what most of these things start with? Kill your darlings. Most of them start with this. I'm just not a morning person. I'm just not that kind of person. I'm not that. Oh, I don't do that. That's not how I roll. I'm not that kind of person. Those are your darlings. Okay? Those are your ideas and concepts that limit who you can be. Because you, the intrinsic you, is infinite infinite, meaning the more you learn about you, the more there is to learn about you. The more joy you feel, the more joy there is to feel. The more ideas you have, the more ideas there are to create. You are infinite. And as soon as you say, I'm just not that kind of person, whether you say it directly or you say it indirectly, you are out of alignment. You're out of alignment with creation. And you are stuck on this idea that for whatever reason you've got as an excuse. So being alignment means no excuses. Being in alignment means, means being open to the potential of other people's realities and your own. Number five, don't overwhelm your target audience with too many choices. Ooh, this is so good for life. What is too many choices really depends on, your tar on who your target audience is. Obviously, a strategy role-playing game should offer more choices in a given situation than a 2D platformer for young children. So we'll sum this one up as... Um, don't offer too many choices to yourself and to your clients. Keep it simple, okay? You want to be able to have a really simple outlook on what you provide and find ways to connect it to where they are. So this one, simply put, is going to be keep it simple. I see a lot of people that go through this amazing journey of growth in their life, in their business, spiritually. And then they turn around and want other people to just be able to download what took them years in 24 hours. That's not keeping it simple, okay? Because you've been exposed to this amazing opportunity, this amazing life of entrepreneurship or the business you're building or the relationship that you've now got that you didn't have before. And we turn around with the best intentions and we try to feed a steak to the baby. We, we choke them with too much. So keep it simple. Don't create too many choices. For you and your business, keep it simple. 
Keep it simple. Don't get into the other than mentality. We're at tremendous risk with number five of getting into the other than mentality, which are creating choices you don't need to have. The classic one is, is health and exercise. So other than exercising and eating right, how do I lose weight? How do I get healthy other than that stuff? Other than going to school and studying a whole lot and writing papers, how do I get a degree? Other than having a clear mission and focus and drive and taking action consistent with that mission every day, how do I build a successful business? Because we're sick of hearing these things over and over and over again. Our reality is sick of it, but their reality has never heard of it. It's why Jack Welch, who I consider the greatest CEO of all time, who I had an opportunity to work with and build a top 25 executive MBA program with, always said, if you're not sick of saying it, you're not saying it enough. And what are you saying? The simple things. You're keeping it simple. Really important piece to designing the game of your life. Well, Paul, I'm, I'm really trying to think about what I should do with the rest of my life. Well, keep it simple and just think about what's the next thing you should do with your life. And then trust that, understand what the next thing you can do will lead to the next thing, the next thing. And then you'll look in retrospect and see a theme if you follow these rules to building this game. Okay, number six, understand your target audience. A lot of games have crashed and burned simply because the designers didn't understand what the target audience of the game wanted. This can be seen in numerous game sequels which have been ill received by fans of the franchise. Also, you cannot understand your target audience if you haven't played the same games they do. Oh, that's gold. You cannot understand your target audience if you haven't played the same games they do. Don't design an online fantasy role-playing game for people who like fantasy role-playing games if you've never played, and then he goes on to name several uh, fantasy-based role-playing games. You need to know what experiences the players have already had and how they felt about those experiences. It's actually more important to play the games they disliked than the ones they liked because the design flaws in the bad games tend to be more obvious than in games which were successful. Okay? This, number six, is be authentic. Be real about your painful life experiences. Be real about your struggles and challenges. Allow yourself to be human so that you can allow them to be human. Demand more of yourself within the realm of your humanity so that you can inspire more from them and theirs. That goes back a lot as well as understanding these two realities. Powerful stuff in here. Number seven, if your game is going to be plot heavy, then write a good story. A good story means characters the player will build an emotional attachment to. The biggest reason a story sucks in a game is because I, the player, don't care what happens to the in-game characters, let alone what they have to say to me. I skip through cutscenes and skim dialogue boxes because I just don't care about the flavor text because the writers and designers have failed to give me a reason to care about the characters. Oof, so good. Um, yeah. And he just goes on to elaborate with some of his own, some of his own uh, references and examples. So, so important. Give people a reason to care. And how do you do that? You care about them. Step into their world. It's not about your agenda up front. It's not about your overcoming objections up front. It's not about your amazing ability to present your product or service up front. It's about caring about them, which gives them a reason to care about you. And then you do that appropriately, you'll give them a reason to care about everybody else. And if you're in a home-based business, that's a beautiful sequence to create. If you're having a hard time getting your, your distributors or your clients or your, your people, your teams, to care as much about other people as you care about them, then check that sequence. How have you demonstrated the way you care about them? We teach a very specific methodology for that called intrinsic validation. Intrinsic validation is, is exactly how you get into the plot heavy game, which is other people's lives. It's very plot heavy. How many of us, because this is powerful, the biggest reason a story sucks in the game is because player doesn't care. And what do we do? 
and this is as much for us, we skip the cut scenes, we skim the dialogue boxes because we don't care about the flavor of the text. How many of us are doing this with other people in our game? How many of us are skipping the cut scenes, skipping the dialogue boxes, skipping the plot because we think we've got it figured out and we just want to play the game? Well, the best way to play the game is to understand the game and more importantly, to understand the people in the game. So to care about them, to love them, which we go really deep into with all of our clients right up front with intrinsic validation. Number eight, the game should not require the player to read numerous essays in order for them to learn how to play. The design of the game should teach players how to play. The design of the game should teach players how to play while they are playing. I'm gonna read that again because this is so good. The design of the game should teach players how to play while they are playing. Any game mechanic that is not intuitive and requires lengthy explanation from a forum post or a website page or a book or anything else should not be part of the game, period. People play video games to relax from work or school and not to do additional homework. Now, once someone gets really good at the game, the likelihood they're going to want to study it more and get better at it, especially if they care about the other people in the game, is important. Some of you might have a, a book or training or lots of books and trainings tied to your business. Well, you want to make sure that they can start playing the game without needing to read massive essays and numerous things. So number eight is get into action quickly. If you're having a hard time playing your game, more than likely it's because you're out of alignment, you're not embracing the millimeters, all these other things, and you're feeling like you need way too much of the forums and everything else to even be able to play the game on a simple level. So design your game in a simple way that allows you to get into action quickly. Don't fall into that other than mentality because those other than things is exactly what gives you the foundation to win the game. So good. Number nine. Listen to player feedback, but make sure the feedback is coming from the target audience of your game. Oh, yes! Listen to player feedback, but make sure the feedback is coming from the target audience of your game. I can't tell you how many people are building businesses and being dissuaded from doing things because people they wouldn't want in their businesses anyway told them they didn't like it. So many people are not who they could be because people that don't matter to their mission have told them that they shouldn't be that. People that don't matter to their mission, not people that don't matter, okay? Because we don't pick and choose who we care about. We care about the intrinsic value of a human being, but people that their reality don't matter in creating our reality, we just want to honor and love them, have them be a part of our world so we don't waste a lot of energy on ignoring them or waste a lot of energy on trying to get approval from them. We want to listen to feedback but also clarify the feedback you're receiving. Is it coming from your target audience? Because if you're trying to play a game and allowing people that don't want to play that game to dictate how you design that game, you are destined to fail. You are destined to beat the crap out of yourself for stuff and create problems that don't even exist. Oh, so good. If you're making a, I have no idea what that is, MMORPG, don't ask people who rarely play MMORPGs to test it. And certainly don't ask people who haven't played many MMORPGs or don't play MMORPGs often. That's like when you're posting on Facebook to expand your brand and what you do. You're not posting for people. You're posting for a person. You're posting for that person that is in alignment with your mission and your why that you are continually verifying and validating along the way as you're embracing the millimeters to be in alignment, keeping it simple, authentic, caring and loving them, and getting into action quickly. Bam, this is so good, okay? So number nine is listen and validate feedback. If someone told you that you talked them into it, or you sounded salesy, and you now become convinced that every single person you talk to feels that way, you're listening to the wrong feedback, and you will sabotage yourself. You will tank your energy. You will miss the opportunity for the next person who needed you to be that bold, 
who needed you to walk up to them and bug them or offend them because it changed their life. So listen to the feedback, but validate. Be really clear about whether it's in alignment with your target audience, with the people that you care about offering that to. Remember, we care about everyone. That's why if someone doesn't appreciate what we're doing, we don't need to write them off as a, as a piece of scum, okay? We don't need to just, oh, they just don't get it. No, it's more like it's just not right for them. Or maybe they're not willing to bring their wall down, which makes a whole lot of sense when you understand the arts, art and law of connection to be able to create inspired, intrinsically validating conversations. Number 10, <laughs> make a good game. A good game is a game that will positively cha challenge and occasionally surprise its own creators. A good game is a game that will positively challenge and occasionally surprise its own creators. The key words are positively challenge. A game that frustrates its own creators will certainly frustrate the players. And a game that bores its own creators will bore the players. Make a good game. I'm not going to change that one at all. So good. Okay, so good. Let's review the list really quick. Okay, first of all, number one, establish your mission and your mission and your why. What's the premise, the focus of the game you're designing in your life or your relationship or your health? Whatever it is, okay? Pick one and focus there and it will trickle into the others and then you can be more intentional about those when you build this one here, whatever that is for you, okay? Mission and why. Verify and validate it every step of the way. Check back in with your mission. Study, keep, th keep in alignment. Get around people that support what you're doing. Embrace the millimeters. Do the work, no shortcuts. Step by step by step so that you can teach other people to do that, so that you can create a path that is duplicatable in terms of principles and systems, but honors the uniqueness and the personality and the gifts of every individual person. Keep it simple, or excuse me, be in alignment. Make sure that everything you're doing is in alignment with your mission and your why. If it's not, ask why. And if it can't be changed in perspective to be in alignment, then it's time to get rid of it. Okay, then keep it simple. Keep it really simple. We, we, we try to do so many things every day, but we, rare, we rarely only get about 10 to 15% done every day of what we wanted to get done. And then we spend 90% of our energy beating ourselves up because we only got 10% done. Why not just get 20% done and feel amazing the rest of the day? Okay, or throughout the day, because that 20% will take all day for a lot of us. Okay, so keep it simple so that it can be enjoyable. Be authentic. Play the game that you're trying to design. Actually play the game. And give yourself permission to suck at the game early on. Give yourself permission to learn hard lessons in the game. But then hit reset and go back and play it again. And keep playing. And have fun with it. And embrace your own challenges, your own weaknesses, your own everything to give other people permission to do the same. Love them. Care about them. Care about the people you're designing your game for and inspire them to care about other people at that level. To be able to see their own intrinsic pricelessness, to be able to see others. Get into action quickly. I will act now, scroll nine. I will act now, because no matter how good of a game you design, if it doesn't get you into action quickly, if it doesn't get them into action quickly, and a game they can learn while they're playing it, and a game you can learn while you're playing it. That's how we learn to play these games. I can't teach you to play tennis sitting in your office chair. You gotta get on a tennis court, get into action quickly. Listen and validate the feedback. Listen to feedback, be open to it. Understand that it's their experience, your reality, their reality. Feedback is their reality. Yours is still intact, unless you allow it to feed on it and to disintegrate it. And especially if this reality isn't the people you're looking for, for your mission and your why, you can care about them. You can step into their world and you may find out they're not the right fit, but you'll do so from a far less rejected and emotionally draining perspective and to be that much more available for the ones who are ready and who are your target audience. And then make a good game. 
make a good game. Be aware of why you're doing this. Be clear about your desire to help people. Be clear about your desire to be rich and to make a lot of money, to, to have nice things, to travel, to whatever. Give yourself permission to make it a good game. A good game is a game of abundance in every area, not just in helping and serving people, but abundance in your finances, abundance in your time, abundance in your health and your energy and vitality, abundance in your relationships and your marriage. Make a good game. Play it authentically. Make sure it's in alignment. What an incredible lesson today for the framework of designing the game of our life, because personal development is a game. What a great framework from the RPG fanatic at giantbomb.com who wrote one of the most powerful personal development pieces in a blog about how to design video games. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being on. I hope that you will consider these 10 steps. And if any of these steps are things you have a challenge with, if one of them or most of them are challenges for you, and you can see the quality of the game you could design and winning that game if you could overcome that, then it's time to start talking about coaching. It's time to step up from these power sessions and talk about group coaching, individual coaching, business mentoring, getting the opportunity to work that much deeper with my coaches that are, that are trained, expertly trained, to be able to teach you the thought processes behind all 10 of these and to be able to give you the tools and the practices and processes and principles, and more importantly, work with you to apply them so that you can not only design a good game, but you can win it over and over and over again. Thanks so much for being on the Power Session today. Love you guys. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next week. Take care.